Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Annika and today I'm going to show you how I made Alina's black hefter from the show Shadow and Bone. I read the books only a year before the Netflix adaptation was released. I like the Shadow and Bone trilogy, but I think the show managed to add more depth to the characters that was missing in the books. Six of Crows was just perfect and I'm truly impressed by how well they managed to merge the two books series in one TV series. After I first watched the show, I wasn't so sure what I should think about the costumes. I fell in love with Genya's white kefta and I thought that Alina's black and golden kefta looked amazing. But the other keftas probably are just colored too vividly for my taste. I would have loved Alina's blue kefta to be a darker shade of blue. When the show was released, I didn't think I would make a cosplay from it. But then it was announced that the cast of Shadow and Bone would be at Comic Con here in Germany. So I wanted to take the opportunity to meet at least some of them. And of course, as a cosplayer, I had to make the right outfit. The only problem left was to decide which of Alina's kefters I should make. Despite the golden kefter being really pretty, it's a no-go, because it represents a huge violation of Alina's free will by the Darkling. From the start, I thought the black kefter is more beautiful than the blue one, but from the books, I know that the blue kefter is the one Alina really connects with, so the decision was really hard. In the end, I choose looks over meaning and started my research on the black kefter. Finding reference pictures is so hard. There are definitely more from the blue kefta, so I rewatched episode 5 of Shadow and Bone again and again to get a good look at the fabric, the embroidery pattern and the hat piece she wears. I found one picture of the black kefta on the Netflix Shadow and Bone page, uh, you can find here, where you can discover a map of the Grisha world and enter Alina's room at the little palace. There you can find pictures of all the characters from the different Grisha orders, but it still was very small and blurry, so... Mm. After a while I also realized that I had to wear something beneath the kafta. You absolutely can't see what Alina wears in the show, but I was able to find two pictures on Pinterest where you can see her wearing a black dress. But due to time, I will cover that one in another video. So after I figured out what I was looking for, I set out to search all my local fabric stores and online shops I could find. I wasn't able to find anything that looked like the original fabric or something that came close to it. So after countless attempts, okay, maybe six, I found a thin cotton for the kefta and another some kind of synthetic fabric with a shiny surface I wanted to use for the dress. After I've done my research, I also started to look for a pattern for the kefta because buying a pattern is always easier than making my own, at least for me. I found the Simplicity Sewing Pattern S8974 and code A looked a little ridiculous on the package, but the pattern is worth gold if you want to make a kefta. I only needed to make a few changes like adding length to the skirt and sleeves and taking away uh, some of the volume at the bottom of the skirt and making the collar higher. Of course I had to sew a mock-up first. It would have been a nightmare if I had done all the embroidery and then had to figure out that the cover that blah, blah, that the, that the kefta doesn't fit. But I was really happy with the mock-up, so I could start to work on the real fabric. First step was to wash my fabric, since there's always the possibility that they will shrink during their first wash. So you wouldn't want that to happen to your cosplay, right? It was quite the challenge to hang those two six meter long pieces of fabric, but I managed eventually. And my cat did also help a little. But after the fabric had dried in the summer heat, I could cut out the pattern for the kefta. I had to borrow this footage from later when I was cutting out the pattern for the lining of the kefta because I didn't film anything of the beginning of making this cosplay. So sorry for that.
Then the hard part began. I made the first pattern for the embroidery for the front of the top. It took some attempts to get the proportions right. At least I could find good references for the top of the kafta and I was still determined to make the kafta as accurate as possible. I also made the embroidery pattern for the back of the top. But when I started to transfer the pattern to my fabric, I ran into some problems. I first tried to use a chalk pen. It kind of worked, but I had to use a lot of force to make the marks visible enough. And after I started to embroider the pieces, the marks vanished so quickly. That's just what happens if you constantly touch the fabric with your hands. So I chose a permanent method and used a white gel pen. In the end, the marks aren't visible anymore since they are covered with the embroidery. So it worked just fine for me. They probably used gold work for the embroidery of the kafta and the show, but I chose to use simple thread. It was hard enough to do. I still had some crochet yarn in gold and white gold that had the perfect color. I also liked that the yarn was thicker than the average embroidery thread. So I could imitate the structure of the gold work and fill in all the areas as quick as possible. The crochet yarn I used were the colors 300 and 303 by Anchor Metallic. I also used regular embroidery thread by Rico Design in the color 221. I first tried to stitch the outline of the embroidery with my sewing machine, but that didn't work so well. So I used the metallic embroidery thread by Rico Design in the color 921 and stitched them by hand as well. By the way, if you're wondering if there are machines that would make all of this a lot easier, there are. But I just can't afford an embroidery machine and I wouldn't have enough space for it anyway, so hand stitching it is. After finishing the back of the top, I figured out a good routine, so I picked up my pace from here. I drew the pattern, cut it out to make a template, transferred the pattern onto my fabric, started with the outline and then filled in the embroidery with the individual colors. The sleeves are kind of weird though. The embroidery is mostly symmetrical, but near the cuff the symmetry ends, so it's important to keep that in mind. We had also reached the mid of September, which means I had to take a little break, because I was attending a FIA. It is such a lovely outdoor convention where you feel like you actually entered the fairy world. My friends and I actually stayed a few days longer after the weekend of the convention and did a one day trip to Amsterdam. I took my embroidery with me to work on during the car ride, so part of the costume had been to Amsterdam already. I also did some embroidery during train rides, during movie nights with friends and two pub quizzes. Deadlines can do that to you. While I was working on the second sleeve, I wanted to know how much time I already spent on this project. Since TV shows and audiobooks are a valid method to measure time, I calculated how much time has passed while I did my embroidery, while watching all seasons of Friends, Shadow and Bone and several Disney movies. I also watched Squid Game and listened to all audiobooks of the Lunar Chronicles, started with From Blood and Ash and listened to the second book of Stormheart by Cara Carmack. Definitely recommend that. Turned out I already spent more than 200 hours on the kafta and I wasn't even halfway done. Here you can see what I was able to make within one and a half month. I really needed to see some more progress at this point. So I made the collar next to be able to sew the top part of the kefta together. First I made a sketch for the embroidery pattern. I used the back part of my kefta to make sure that the embroidery would line up later. After I was done with drawing the pattern, I cut everything out to make a template. Cutting out those tiny pieces with a scalpel works very well. At first I used some tiny little scissors, since I didn't have my scalpel with me while I was visiting my parents. This is also the reason why I didn't film anything in the beginning of making this cosplay, so I'm very sorry for that. Now that I had the template, I could easily transfer my embroidery pattern onto my fabric. First 
I stitched the outline with my metallic embroidery thread. Then I went in again and filled the rest with the different colors. Little pro tip here, if you embroider anything that is smaller than your embroidery hoop, don't cut it out until you're done embroidering it. So you have enough of the fabric to put into your embroidery hoop. That will prevent the fabric from being twisted in any way it's not supposed to be twisted. the embroidery was done, I prepared the fake fur to line the collar. First I cut out a piece that was about 1 cm in high. That's supposed to be on the outside of the collar as well. I pinned the piece to the upper side of the collar, right sides facing each other and then sewed it down within the seam allowance. took the pattern of my collar and cut that out of the fake fur as well. edges of my collar pieces and pinned them together. I also cut out some small triangles from the seam allowance since the collar is lightly curved. After I had sewn all the collar pieces together, I trimmed away some of the seam allowance. Before I sewed the collar and the top part of the kefta, I painted the fabric with a silver pen to make it look more accurate. It's best to do this step where you can lay your fabric flat on your desk. After all that was done, I could finally sew the pieces together. I followed the instructions of my pattern, first sewing the front side pieces to the front and then sewing the back side pieces to the back. I also made some cuts in the seam allowance so I could properly press the fabric nice and flat. Next I sewed the shoulder seams before sewing the sides together.
repaired the sleeves by making gathering stitches at the top. With the help of the thread it's fairly easy to fit the sleeve to the armhole. Unfortunately I didn't film how I sewed in the sleeves but I'll show you that step when I make the lining. After I did the gathering stitches, I folded the sleeve in half and stitched along the seam allowance. I was so happy with how everything looked so far. I also think that this would make a really cool jacket. Now it was time to start on the skirt. I think you know the drill by now. First I drew the pattern, cut it out and transferred it onto my fabric. Then I did the embroidery. At this point I also started to draw on the fine silver lines you can see on the fabric of Alina's Kefta. First I used the metallic marker in silver by Stettler. It worked very well at first but after a while the lines became barely visible so I was looking for another pen. I chose the calligraphy pen by adding and I used it for the rest of my kefta. I think it has enough ink in it to cover the whole kefta with just one pen. By the end of October I started to work on the back of the skirt. I did everything as usual but before I did the embroidery on the back seam I sewed the back skirt panels together to make it easier to put the fabric into the embroidery hoop and to line up the embroidery properly. Here you 
can see all the skirt panels together. The back seam was the only place that still needed to be embroidered. Soon the back pieces of my skirt together, I ironed the seam flat and nice so I could continue to embroider the last piece that was still missing to finish my kefta. <laughs> On November the 13th, I finally finished the embroidery at half past three in the morning. I just fell into bed and celebrated later. I also had to share these exciting news on Instagram the next day. I did it! Oh my god, I finally did it! I finished the embroidery for Alina's kefta and look at this! Look at it! It's so much! It's what you get when you do non-stop embroidery for three months and yes god i'm so happy right now but there are still a few things i need to do before i can sew these pieces together um for example painting on the design on the fabric which i already did here on the top part but i still need to do it for the skirt and then i want to go in again for the front pieces i did it not the way I got used to later, so I'm going in again and um, match it up to the rest of the kefta. But then I'll be able to sew this all together and try it on and I can't wait. <laughs> I'm so excited. Of course I had to put all the skirt pieces together to see how it would look like and I had barely enough space to put them on next to each other in my tiny apartment, but it did fit somehow. Then as I said, I continued to paint the fabric. I discovered that tape was really useful here since I didn't have to hold down the fabric with my hand anymore. I also had to line the kefta to hide the ugly backside of the embroidery. So I just cut out my kefta pattern out of the same fabric again. Except for the collars. These were basically the same steps I did at the beginning of this journey, but I could sew everything together without any extra steps. Now I can show you how to sew in the sleeves. First I gathered the fabric a little where I did the gathering stitch before. Then I laid out the top part of my kefta inside out. Next I took the sleeve and placed it with the right side outside in the armhole. Then I shifted around the fabric until all my marks and seams matched. I pinned the sleeve in place with what felt like a thousand needles and sewed it in with my sewing machine. Next I sewed together the skirt. First I placed down the panels with right sides facing each other and then just did a straight stitch along the seam allowance. 
And ta-da! The lining was done! This is what the kafta would look like without any embroidery. I also wanted the kafta to have pockets, since I plan to wear it at a convention and pockets make everything better. It was also the first time I sewed pockets. I used the same fabric I used to make Alina's dress. I made sure they were extra large. I placed them at the side seam of the skirt. I needed two pieces per pocket. I first sewed one piece of the pocket to the front of the skirt and the other to the back of the skirt, right sides facing each other. Then I sewed the skirt pieces together like I normally would and also sewed around the pockets which I had turned to the inside before. I could try on, well, kind of try on the skirt for the first time and I was so happy with the pockets. Then I could sew the skirt to the top of the kefta. This was a huge step since I could finally see everything coming together. Next I cut out the bias tape, which was no bias tape, since I cut it in the direction of the grain. Can I call it grain tape? Instead of cutting white stripes of fabric, I could fold over. I cut stripes that were two and a half centimeters wide, plus some seam allowance. In the series where Genya first presents the black kafta to Alina, you can see that there is a seam and the stripes are not just folded over. So I sew two stripes of fabric together. There's also an additional piece of fabric that's underneath the loops. I cut out two rectangular pieces that were 30 cm long and 3 cm wide plus seam allowance. I sewed the pieces together, leaving one long side open. I ironed them and drew on the silver lines with the adding pen. Then I sandwiched that between my fabric stripes, alias grain tape, at the right place, which was 30 cm from the top of the kafta, for me. I also needed to make loops for the buttons. In order to do that, I needed an elastic cord and two stripes of fabric. I folded the elastic into loops and sandwiched it between the fabric. This made it easier to sew it down. I also measured the length of the front opening of the kafta, the length of the hem of the skirt, the length of the side slits and the width of the cuffs to know how long the stripes needed to be. Don't forget to add enough seam allowance. After I was done with that, I sewed on the stripes along the edges of the kafta where I inserted the lining before. I first sewed them onto the right side of the fabric within the seam allowance using my machine. Then I folded the stripe over and sewed it down on the left side with hand stitches to make the stitches invisible. The advantage of making individual stripes instead of one continuous one was that I didn't have to go through the discomfort of folding the fabric around the edges. Instead I just folded under the ends like I wanted them to be and sewed it down. In the end I achieved a very clear look. I made the cuffs the same way. 
I first sewed the fabric stripes together, the black shiny fabric for the outside and the fake fur for the inside. I joined the ends of the fabric before I sewed it onto the sleeves. First onto the right side, then with hand stitches to the inside. I ordered some fabric covered black buttons and sewed them onto the opposite side of the loops. I used a toothpick where I looped the thread around while sewing on the buttons to prevent the tension of the thread from getting too tight. I also sewed buttons above the side slits, four on each side. I think there are supposed to be five buttons but I didn't go high enough with my embroidery so four buttons look best. To complete the kefta I needed to make the belt. Well, two belts actually. The first belt is about six centimeter wide so I didn't make it straight so it would fit better on my body and doesn't stick out anywhere. It also has what I think is golden piping so I learned how to make piping myself with some leftover golden fabric. First I cut out stripes on the bias and made continuous bias tape. Then I folded it around some yarn and used my zipper foot and my sewing machine to sew it shut. I pinned it to the right side of the fabric and stitched it in place before adding the second layer of black fabric for the belt. I stitched that all together and turned it inside out. Then I inserted some thin EVA foam to make the belt sturdier. After I managed that I closed the opening. I made the small belt out of fake leather. The fabric I had wasn't long enough, so I made it out of two pieces, which I sewed together. I could just fold over the fabric with right sides facing each other and then I sewed along the seam allowance. After that I turned the belt inside out, which wasn't easy. Top stitched along the edges. Next I had to make the belt buckle with Rafka's two-headed eagle. I used warbler as the base. I cut out a rectangle with rounded edges and made the rim using scrap parts. Then I carved the eagle out of clay with the help of a needle and some small modeling tools. Added a hook to the back and a movable ring with warbler again. Then I primed and painted the buckle with golden acrylic paint. After the paint had dried, I could attach it to the belt. I threaded the belt through the ring and sewed it down using my machine. I think in the show they used hooks and eyes to close the belt, but I had enough of hand stitching. So I just took a piece of fabric and glued one end to the belt and glued velcro to the other. Then I glued the other side of the velcro to the inside of the other end of the belt. I 
punched holes into the small belt and secured them with hand stitches. Then I added loops to the big belt. I just glued them down with hot glue since I was still sick of hand stitching. Then I threaded the small belt through them and then I could finally add them to the kefter. In the end I bought a 3D printed belt buckle and replaced the one I made. One piece was still missing. I didn't notice it right away but on the evening of Alina's demonstration of her powers in the Grand Palace, all the Grisha are wearing a kind of scarf knotted onto their belts. So I cut out yet another rectangular piece of fabric from the fabric I used for Alina's dress folded it, sewed around the edges and turned it inside out before sewing it close. I pressed the edges with my iron and knotted it around the belt with a simple tie knot. That's how I made my kafta. I had finished it just in time for Comic Con and later had a photo shoot after Christmas in the freezing cold. But all the hard work really paid off. Jessie May Lee, the actress of Alina, seemed very impressed and Ben Barnes almost gave me a heart attack with this compliment. Good thing someone filmed this glorious moment. That's a great pepper. <laughs> photo he even gave me a ticket so I could get the photograph signed. I'll make another video where I'll show you how I made Alina's dress, her wig and her jewelry. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!